Well, hello, everybody. So good to be here with you today. I get the great privilege of bringing today's Daybreak Devo on the topic of salvation. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite passages of Scripture on this particular topic. It's a few verses that I memorized years ago because it's so inspired and encouraged me in, in what God is doing in my own life when He saved me. From Titus chapter 2, so if you have your Bible, go ahead and open that up, or if not, it's okay, just follow along. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, and it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope the glorious appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ who gave himself up to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good there's so many different things in these three or four short verses out of the whole Bible that teach us these amazing truths about what God has done in us when he brings salvation into our lives. Remember, salvation, it's not a destination. It's not about making a decision to put our faith in God, and then we just simply wait for heaven, and we hang on till we get there. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 3, he said, Now eternal life is this, it's knowing you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, which means then that his intention for salvation all along was that we would live our lives in relationship with God. And when we die, when we leave this earth, which all of us will at some point, we get the promise of being with him forever in heaven. But his desire for you and for me is that when we are saved, when we're born again, when we have surrendered our lives to Jesus, that he begins setting these wonderful and beautiful things in motion in our lives that bring about this lifelong transformation. Starting in verse 11, it says that this grace that brings salvation has appeared to everybody. We know that we're saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So it's not by our own works, it's by putting our faith in Jesus. But then the Bible teaches us that when we've made that decision of faith, change begins to happen in our lives. It goes on to say, this grace that brings salvation, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions, which means that, that we can resist temptation. We begin living a different life because of the life of Jesus that now lives in us. And it goes on to say, it's not just about you know Christianity and faith and salvation aren't just about not sinning any longer. But it goes on to say, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. So not only are we no longer doing certain things, the, the things that led to death in our lives, giving ourselves over to sin, but we begin living a godly life. We are not doing certain things anymore, but we're also focused now on doing the, the things that please God's heart and fulfilling his commands and his purposes. It says we live in self-control and godliness as well. It goes on to say then, while we wait for this blessed hope, we are waiting for God. We are looking towards our Savior's return with an eagerness and a hope, which which means that, that we are motivated to live the life that God desires us to live because it reiterates as all the bible does that he gave himself for us to redeem us and to purify us away from wickedness and into a life of purpose and love and joy and peace that god intended for us because it goes on to say we are his very own we belong to god when we make a decision of faith, when we've committed our lives to Jesus, the Bible teaches us that he adopts us as his own. We now belong to him. Pastor Clint often uh, you know, lovingly uses that phrase, we now have refrigerator rights in the kingdom of heaven because we're a part of his family. We're a part of his kingdom. And then it concludes this particular passage in verse 14 where it talks about the people of God 
are eager to do what is good because of salvation, because of the hope Jesus brings, because he not only has saved us from sin, he saved us from an empty and purposeless life. He saved us from an eternity apart from him, where the Bible does describe this place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, an eternal fire separated from God. But Jesus himself describes heaven. He used oftentimes one word, paradise. I don't know what all that means, but I know it means something really, really good because God is the architect and the designer and the creator and the mastermind behind all of it. And the scripture teaches us that he's so good and he's so loving. So I want to encourage you today, if you know him and if you're in relationship with him, if this salvation has come to you, then continue in your journey with the Lord and your relationship with him to say, God, I want your salvation to continue daily, bringing about your eternal change in my life so that now my life, it doesn't just look like not doing certain things anymore. It looks like I'm beginning to do the things that please your heart. And if you're watching this video today and you're beginning to be stirred in your heart and you know that you don't know Jesus, you can. He's only a prayer away, friend. All you have to do is pray and commit your life to him. Open your heart to him. Tell him today that you need him to save you, to do his eternal transformational work in you on the inside, to forgive you of all of your sins and, and to empower you to begin living out his great plans and purposes for your life. I hope that encourages you today in the same way this passage has encouraged me so much. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. God bless you. Have a great day.